but there are different people who have understood it in a different way and then they, we are amending it. In the same way, the wisdom is given originally by God at different point of time, a different saves myself realize a different science in that particular mantra, which we are going to see. So the beauty of this presentation is by the end, I want all my viewers, they will get a formula or how to derive the meaning of the Vedic mantras, step by step in a mathematical way. Rig Bay 1071.3, the wise discovered placed in the heart of the seer. Again, not me, Veda themselves, there it is mentioned, Rig Bay 1071.3, the wise discovered it. So in, in the heart, it is not the physical heart we are talking about. We are talking about the soul in which the wisdom was realized by these sages. Over the span, the Vedic teaching has changed. You will be surprised by the time we end up this presentation. The meaning of the Vedic mantras was changed up to a level where one really feels pity, sad and humiliated in other way by some of the modern day acharyas. But when I was doing this research and I was reading uh, uh, Rishi Dayanand's uh, book uh, uh, Rigved Bhasha Bhumika, beautifully he has explained that all the previous acharyas, they used to use the same methodology and they had the same mechanism of translating Vedas which Rishi Dayanand had. So the following 16 commentator proceed this sayana. You have Iskanda Swami, you have Durga, Ugita, then you have Hari Swami, you have Upata, Vararuchi, Bhata Bhaskara, then Madhava, then Atmananda, Ananda Tirtha. So you have all these people who have basically considered Nirut and Nigandu, which are the book of uh, etymology or a vocabulary where you find out the root words, Dhatu part, and they interpret it in a correct way. But suddenly, we see there comes Sayan and Mahidar who totally change the meaning of the Vedas. And we will see how they change the meaning of the Vedas. Now, 16th comment, 16 commentators, ancient uh, Acharyas and Rishi Dayana, they all are in the same league. But we have some of the few scholars which we will, which we will see in the presentation following a different methodology. What is the objective? Let's see. So coming back to <clears throat> Sion the Great, really? So Sion focused on sacrificial and deity mindset while interpreting Vedic mantras. He considered Vedas as book of rituals. As everything looks yellow to a jaundiced person, so Sion smells sacrifice in every word of Veda. The very ordinary words which have not even the remotest sense of sacrificial act have been explained as proper noun, if I will say, by sign. So example, uh, I'd like to explain a little bit here. So suppose, in Vedic mantra, one place, it's written, Hanyati Gau. Now, if you consider as a proper noun, proper nouns, I think we all know, like if my name is Bharat, it's a proper noun. If someone's name is Tom, it's a proper noun. But Bharat can have different meaning. A person who gives knowledge, who spreads knowledge is also Bharat, right? Similarly, Gau, Hanyate, if you see proper, Han means attack, kill or cut. Gau, cow. If you see from proper noun point, it is like someone is killing a cow. But if you see the actual meaning, it doesn't mean cow. It's talking about some different signs here. So sign mindset was and Mahidar was, they were focused on proper noun. So remember viewers, remember everyone, proper now. Suddenly, there was a point in the history of India where the Sanskrit was forgotten, the yogic or the real Sanskrit was forgotten and the Sanskrit of proper noun came. The problem with proper noun is, the meaning is derived by the mindset of a person. So suppose if I think, oh, the meaning is this, I will write it in such a way. If my mind is bad or dirty like Sain or Mahida, I will write mantra or the meaning of the mantra in that pattern. <clears throat> so
So here we go. Vedic, yogic versus logic Sanskrit. How Hindus, Islamic, Christians, Western scholars misinterpret Vedas. Let's start this journey of deciphering why Hinduism has been changed in such a way. If I ask anyone to read what is written on the board, can anyone read, uh, Dr. Chandora? Rock, rocks on rock by the rock. So what does it mean, if I ask you? The rock is rocking on a rock by another rock. Yes. So, so you mean, rock means uh, a stone or a pathar in Hindi, right? So now the problem here is, this is a Vedic mantra, if I say. Rock, rocks on rock by the rock. Because of our limited knowledge, because rock we know is a stone or a pathar in Hindi, we see only stone in this. But if I say rock is a large stone, a type of music, a shortened form of rock and roll, also a verb which means to move back and forth while remaining stationary. So if I move back and forth and I do rock and roll, now if you go back, basically it's talking about there's a guy named Rock who rocks on rock by the rock. Now it will make a totally different sense. So this itself gives the meaning of how Vedic mantra has to be interpreted. Right? Yeah. Now there are certain set of uh, rules for every Vedic mantra that we all must follow. Mantra should not violate Nirupt. What is Nirupt? Very important to understand that I am going to refer to Nirup in all my uh, future slides. Nirup is one of the sixth Vedan discipline of Hinduism or Vedic Dharma. Treating etymology, particularly of obscure words, especially those occurring in the Vedas, the discipline is traditionally attributed to Yaska, an ancient Sanskrit grammarian. Yaska's association with the discipline is so great that he is also known as Nirutkar, means someone who has created Nirup. It is used for deriving the word meaning supplemented with glossaries of difficult or rare Vedic words. Nigantu. What is Nigantu? It's a lexicon of Vedic Sanskrit. It explains the root having the same meaning and denoting the same action and collect together all the synonyms signifying the same object and all the words having different meaning. There are many names for one and the same thing and one name for many objects. Now, this is very important. If you understand, there are many names for one and the same thing and one name for many objects. So, coming, giving one example which I already mentioned, Gau. When we say Gau, it is a cow. But Gau is something which is moving on its axis or which has a motion which means a planet can be a gov or a Jupiter or a sun or something can be a gov. So this is what you find out out of Nirukt and Nigantu. Then we have Dhatupak by Panini and Mahabhashya by Panini. So whenever we do any Vedic mantra translation, what we do, again, this is my understanding which has come out of after reading uh, Rishi Dayanand's work, find out the Devta in the mantra. Devta gives you an idea what is happening inside the mantra. Find out what who is the Rishi, what kind of interpretation Rishi might have done. Take these two things, go into the mantra, start with every word, find the dhatu, the root which is used in that. Out of the root, check out the context. Look for Nirupta Nigantu, that okay, what can be the combination. Then you have to apply the grammar also in the right form. So if you see all of these, Nirup, Nigantu, Dhatupat, Mahabhashya, and Dev, Deva of the mantra and the Rishi, they all together form a gambit to interpret the Vedic mantra. Now, it might be, people might think that, oh, I am not a great Sanskrit scholar. Yes, I am not, but I am presenting from the great Sanskrit scholar point of view. Now, what is the opinion of Asian Vedic scholars on the subject? Thing which I am presenting right now. Are the authors of Nirupt, the Nigantu, the Mahabhashya, 
and other old commentaries at one with the modern commentators like Ramana, Sahyan, Mahida, Griffith, Max Muller and others who have of late followed the same line or are they at variance with the modern writers? That is, if they differ, reliance must be placed onto the previous authors. So the point here is, it's a big challenge in today's life, I tell you. All modern day Western educated, English educated, my friends, they, whenever they find any interpretation of Max Muller, Griffith, they simply say, oh, these guys have done a great, great work. This is the actual meaning. But the problem is, how can I say, <laughs> if I go to Jerusalem, or if I go in a Christian country, that I know Bible better than you, right? So you have to go to the source to find out the actual meaning from the people who live in that place, who are following it, who are reading and learning it from last thousands of years. So how can Max Muller or a Griffith can be a greater commentator than all 16 commentators which I presented? Then they go to Saman, Mahidar and uh, Sayan. My question is, I will show you their interpretation, what kind of interpretation, to interpretation they do and let the people realize or understand if it is actually correct or not. So let us examine the view of ancient writer on this subject. Speaking broadly, three classes of words are used in Sanskrit language. Yogic, Rudi, and Yogruri words. 